The case is closed. Why don't we move on? The case is closed, at least according to Republican Majority Leader Senator Mitch McConnell of Kentucky, who refused to criticize President Trump for saying he theoretically would welcome political dirt from a foreign government in 2020. As CNN's Sunland Serfati reports, the bigger issue might be that McC McConnell has shown hostility toward legislation that would tighten security in U.S. elections. They just can't let it go, Laura. You know, I said weeks ago, case closed. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell not just defending the president, but blaming Democrats who were astonished by Trump's comments about accepting dirt on political opponents from foreign governments. Would you answer that question that well, way? Well, he, he, gets, he gets picked at every day over every different aspect of it. But the fundamental point is they're trying to keep the 2016 election alive. In addition to changing the conversation for the president, McConnell has been cleaning house in the Senate, blocking votes on any bill he chooses. Since January, the Senate has only passed 21 of the 264 bills already passed by the House, which have become law. Two more were vetoed by the president. Some of the legislation passed includes back paying federal workers during the government shutdown and a $19 billion disaster relief bill. But McConnell has also blocked multiple bipartisan bills, including a bill aimed at tightening security in U.S. elections. On Thursday, it was a bill from Democrats requiring political campaigns to report assistance offers from foreign nationals to the FBI, officially blocked by Republican Senator Marsha Blackburn. Presidential campaigns would have to worry about disclosure at a variety of levels. McConnell's killing of countless other bills has earned him a new nickname from Democrats. Leader McConnell, the Grim Reaper, is creating this graveyard. Leader McConnell seems to take great pride in calling himself the Grim Reaper. It's part of the pride he takes as leader of the Senate. It's a moniker McConnell does indeed seem to relish, even selling a Grim Reaper t-shirt on his campaign website. And McConnell had this to say a few months ago regarding some of the more progressive bills, including the Green New Deal and Medicare for All. Think of me as the Grim Reaper. None of that stuff is going to pass. None of it. The Senate Majority Leader, however, he has been focused on one of his biggest priorities, nominations and confirming conservatives uh, into judgeships. Now, McConnell notably is up for re-election in 2020, where, of course, it's seen uh, as potentially staying in President Trump's good graces. That's seen as being politically advantageous for him. Jake. All right, Sunlin Zerfadi on Capitol Hill. Thanks so much. Uh, let's chew over this. Uh, Sungman, I get why he's proud, Senator McConnell. Uh, to be the Grim Reaper for the Green New Deal mm -hmm. uh, or for any progressive legislation. Uh, but why is he the Grim Reaper for bipartisan election security legislation? I mean, why would that be something he kills? I think he's so writ large. He has characterize everything that Democrats are pushing, everything particularly that the Democratic-led House is pushing, as something that's tied to socialism, even if it's not necessarily the case, because that has been the broader Republican message leading up to 2020, not just from the, the President Trump's level, but down to the Senate races and down to the House races. And now um, someone made a very good point that Mitch McConnell himself is up for re-election and going to, you know, as, you know, as far to the right as possible is politically advantageous to him. Now, my question is, do his... Uh, Republican members, particularly the ones who are running in these uh, at-risk uh, states. Susan Collins in Maine. Susan Collins and right. Cory Gardner. Ma do Martha they McSally start to Arizona, get uh, yeah. impatient with a lack of legislative accomplishments? Then McConnell might start to switch a little bit. But right now, we have seen no signs of that. But I think you can't underestimate the suppressive effect these things are having, right? We're not even talking about the fact that, for example, African Americans were the ones who were targeted, largely targeted in 2016 by the Russians and the bots, right? So you have organizations like the NAACP actually trying to do workshops to train people. Here's how you protect your, you know, your elections and your communications because the federal government is doing nothing. I mean, there's such a concern about this and that nothing's happening. At the same time, people are talking about things like we should be doing paper ballots. What are Republican governors doing? Moving away from paper ballots. So I think, yes, there's this sort of legislative accomplishment piece, but there is also a real strategy, I think, that is about suppressing the vote in a way that I think they believe will actually benefit Republicans. Uh, Bill, um, House Speaker Pelosi tweeted out this photo, what she called McConnell's graveyard in reference to all the legislation. The Democrats pass in the House, it goes to the Senate, uh, and nothing ever, ever happens. Obviously, 
some of it is stuff that McConnell and Republicans would never support. But among, among them are bills like lowering prescription drug prices, which President Trump has talked about, uh, the reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act, which used to be a fairly bipartisan piece of legislation. Why kill those? I don't understand, really, if, if it's something that, that could be bipartisan and could pass. Yeah, and somebody wants to open the door, though, to, well, some bipartisan things, then if they get one or two Republican co-sponsors, is that enough? And I think McConnell may just think tactically it's easier, as long as he's paying no price, and as long as you say his members are paying no price, to just shut the door on everything. But I do wonder if that's sustainable. I think the Democrats could do a much better job of highlighting these individual bills, not saying, t I don't think it's very effective, 245 bills have been passed, who knows what that means, he's the Grim Reaper. Put up ads, put up ads saying Mitch McConnell has stopped this piece of legislation, which has bipartisan support, which a conservative senator, James Lankford from Oklahoma, has said is important for reason X, Y, and Z. They're not really putting much pressure, it doesn't, as much pressure as they could, I think, on McConnell right now. And it does seem like the Democrats in the House are voting for a lot of bills that will that are obviously never going to become law and that might be fun and that might make them feel good but at the end of the day it's not actually legislating yeah and i guess the question is also will democrats then use the argument that the president tried to make over the first couple of years of his presidency which was democrats are obstructionists right will will the democrats take that and weaponize it against republicans to say look at all the bills that we've passed and and that we've tried to push over uh to to the senate where republicans control things where mitch mcconnell is refusing to take these bills uh to the floor and bring them forward for a vote i think that's an argument we could see from democrats and and frankly it was an argument that the president made fairly successfully to voters previously uh, and i think democrats would also have a good amount of success making that same case.